All right. <clears throat> so let's see if uh, let's see if the um, if the microphone is working. So the sound seems to be working fine. Let's open up. Uh, let's actually open up. the um the chatbot so let's do pdm run what's of today deploying a kubernetes cluster from scratch on the node all right so we currently don't have any viewers so we'll uh, We'll crack on, I guess. <clears throat> Maybe I can just. I will just leave it like that. So, oops. So we'll call this Fisher Bot. Um. And then this will be. Let's see if we can move this window. Uh, all right, let's do zero. Yep. All right. Uh, good, 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 good. Yeah, it's half time. Brazil, South Korea. They're, they're having to go at uh, poor South Koreans. So the plan for today um, is to um, use kubedm to deploy a um, to deploy a Kubernetes cluster on <clears throat> on the node. I mean, this could be done on DigitalOcean or any other uh, cloud uh, provider, but. Um, but I, but I thought I'd just use the note. Hey, uh, Shada, how you doing, man? How you doing? Great. Hope you are all right. Uh, let's see. Am I logged in? Am I even logged in? Am I even logged in? Oops. To DigitalOcean. Let's see. To Linode, rather. No, I am not. All right. Well, let me take... A second to log in and I'll be back how does that work we're back we're back, we're back, and logged in. So the plan is to create um, a cluster, a Kubernetes cluster, um, from scratch. So we'll we'll create, we'll deploy the nodes, right? We'll create the, the VMs on um, on the node, and then we'll provision those VMs. Uh, we'll then install kubeadm on the control plane node. Um, and then from there we will we will um, join the work nodes to the cluster. We'll install the uh, uh, we'll install container D. We're not going to be using Docker on this one. Uh, we're going to use container D. Uh, last time around I used uh, Docker, but it was just a bit of a, a bit of a headache to get it to work. So we'll we'll go with container D instead. Um, uh, so we'll do this manually first and then we'll, um, I guess the next stream, uh, which is either going to be tomorrow or uh, um, Wednesday, uh, we'll use Ansible to automate everything and then we'll use Terraform to, uh, <clears throat> to bootstrap the infrastructure. How's the node different than uh, other cloud? Well, not it's not different really. Uh, it's just that I had free credit <laughs> on Linode, but uh, as I said, this can be done on DigitalOcean, it can be done on, on EC2, it can be done on Google Cloud, Azure, 
um, uh, Hetzner, I think. It's the German company. Is it Hetzner? Yeah, Hetzner Cloud. They have become very popular recently. Um, uh, but it's not working. Oh, it's in German. I don't speak German. But, you know. Um, they don't have an English website. But yeah, any sort of... Oh, hello. Um, where's England? Is it Eastland? No. Uh, I'll go with the USA. Oh, English. Huh. So yeah, hats now. Uh, but we're not going to be using this. We'll, we'll, we'll be using uh, reload. <clears throat> and for this, we will uh, use the official Kubernetes documentation. So we'll essentially go through the docs. Uh, so we'll click documentation, um, set up a Kubernetes cluster, set up Kubernetes. And then we're not going to do because uh, we're not going to do learning environment because learning environment will tell us about uh, give us information about kind, midi cube. What we're interested in is cube ADM, right? Um, and so we'll go through this, right? Step by step. So before we begin, a compatible Linux host, Kubernetes project provides generic instructions for the blah, blah, blah. Um, two gigs of RAM, two gigs or more of RAM per machine, and two CPUs or more. Full network connectivity, blah blah blah. Unique host name. This is going to be very important. MAC address and product UID for every node. Certain ports are open on your machine. See here for more details. Swap disabled. So you must disable swap in order for the kubelet to work properly. All right. So we'll do all of these things. Check network adapters and then the required ports. Um, and then we'll go and install um, container runtime. In our case, it's going to be container D, right? So, uh, so let's crack on with this. Let's crack on with this. Um, all right. So, I am going to be using a, do, 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 the Lino TLI, right? In fact, I think I've got notes somewhere. So I think it's cloud, is it cloud? Uh, let's see, is it? Let's go, oop, ash, cd, dev, cloud, cka, and I believe it's, yeah, okay, it's container d. So we'll create uh, an API token and then we'll add it to the config, right? Uh, so in, in this case, it's going to be bash. <clears throat> uh, normally, I use fish, but for this one, I'm going to I'm going to be using bash. Also, tell me if the music is too loud. I can uh, I can um, decrease the volume. Let's see, because that's the input. And let's see. I don't know. I hope it's not too loud. Because YouTube can get. Oops. Yeah, it's very hard to. Um, it's very hard to um, to fiddle with the volume. But we're not going to waste too much time on this. So the plan is to first go to Linode. Now this is specific to Linode. Uh, actually, no, it's not really specific to the node for uh, DigitalOcean. You can do this as well. Now, we could be, you know, clicking around in the GUI and stuff like that, but I don't like to do this. Uh, so I'm going to be using the CLI. And for this, I'm going to need an API key. So I'm going to go to API tokens. I'm going to revoke the one I have now. All right. Let me uh, zoom in. I'm going to click create personal access token. I'm going to label it uh, Fisher case. It's going to expire in six months. Uh, and then we'll just allow read write access to everything. Now, of course, this is going to show, but it's fine because I am going to, um, I'm going to revoke it once this is done. So, 
uh, we'll do export Linode CLI token equals this, right? Now if I echo Linode CLI token, I've got that. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go, I think it's bash RC. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to do export Linode CMI token equals that. And we'll source the bash RC. All right, so presumably, if we open a new pane uh, and we run bash and we echo Linode CLI token, yep. All right, it's working. Great. Uh, I don't know why Tmux is looking ugly, uh, but whatever. So we'll create the node, the nodes. So we need three nodes. And if we go, oh, I forgot to do one thing because this is going to get annoying very quickly. Um, bash RC. I'm going to go alias. Uh, alias L. Oh. I'm going to remove this. I'm just going to do L equals Linode CLI. So that we don't have to type Linode CLI all the time. Right? Oops. Source dash RC. There we go. And now we have the Linode CLI uh, command alias. Good, 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 good. So. Um, so what we want to know, we want to have access to the types of Linodes, right? So we can do L Linodes, right? I think it's types, type, types, yep. So for the uh, master node, we'll go with the G6 standard 2, it's got 4 gigs of RAM, Two CPUs, um, two CPUs, and yeah, and that's it, really. So we'll go with this. So that's going to be the master node, and then for the um, for the uh, for the work nodes, we'll we'll just use uh, the standard one. Although we could be using the the standard two. It's it's preferable to use this the um, uh, four gigs of RAM and two vCPUs. Um, but you know, we're not gonna waste the money because this is really just as a demonstration uh, for demonstration purposes. But in production, you really want to be careful um, with this and choose wisely. Uh, okay, so we want to create the, the master node. So we'll do L the nodes create, I believe. All right, so the type, the will pass a type, that's gonna be G6 standard one. Hang on, what was the, uh, is it dash one? Yeah. So, help. Um, so type is gonna be G6. Standard one. The region for me is going to be EU West. Um, the image. Uh, we need to list the images. So let's go and do this. Uh, L. I think it's images. LS. And we will go with Ubuntu 20.04. So that's the image we want to use. So we'll go back and we'll do image this. Um, what else do we need? The image, authorized keys. Um, 
we'll add labels and then we'll add a root password although this has to root user's password on a newly created Linode disk when deploying from an image huh all right interestingly doesn't list of public SSH keys that will be automatically appended to the root users uh, Okay, well, I suppose we can, because uh, I think the root password is required when when uh, creating a Linode from an image. So, okay. Author, authorized keys is going to be, and we need to pass the actual key. So I think it's going to be this, right? Or cat. SSH Oops ID Oh god oh, SSH oh, oh. Uh, So the authorized keys cat this I think it's going to fail. But first, we need to add the label, and that's going to be Fisher My Star. Oh, of course, it's not going to run because it's a comment. Ugh. What is happening here? Okay, great. We'll back on. Unrecognized arguments. Shouldn't it be like uh, equals? I think it's uh, labels. No, it's label. All right, what's the problem here? L and O. Create. How can I can help? A list of public SSH keys that will be automatically appended to the root users so should it just be the path then interesting let's see well yeah that's the problem can we do this Tactics. Let's see. Minimum CLI authorized keys. Let's see. Um. Instances. 
Where's the authorized keys thing? Huh. Authorized keys. If your key exists on your file system, you can also substitute its value with cat. Oh, does it have to be in quotes? Huh. So we were right all along. Root pass is required. All right. Root pass. Uh, we'll just say, I don't know. Uh, hello. Which uh, block? Oh, cool. Okay, so it's created. All right. So if we do uh, l nodes ls. All right. So it's provisioning. So it's got. Um, it's got an IPv4. So we'll essentially do the same thing. Except. Well, actually, we got that wrong. Huh. Uh, so we'll change the label. We'll change the label afterwards. That's fine. So we'll create another one. This is going to be worker2. So Fisher. Worker two. Boom's created. Um, so if we do L nodes LS, so we've got this. If I just do L nodes types real quick. Yeah, so that's going to be for the worker nodes, and that's going to be for um, the master node. All right, so can we do L the nodes uh, LS again? We're getting the ID for this, All right? And that's going to be L the nodes. Let's update. Yep, update label and the label is going to be fisher worker one and we'll pass the id there we go l in the ls all right so we've got fisher worker one fisher worker two and then we'll create the master node like this, and that's going to be Fisher Meister. It's going to take a second. Boom. So while it gets provisioned, we will look at what's going on with Brazil. Still 4 0. All right. <clears throat> so it's still provisioning. All right. So we've created an API token. We've created nodes. Now we're going to have to do. So we're going to have to go back to the um, documentation, and we need to set unique host names uh, and disable swap. So we're going to have to log into each and every one of the. Um, each and every one of the um, of the nodes that we created. Let's actually do that. Um, we'll close this. And so what I'm going to do? Oops, no. 
All right, so we'll do bash. So, L the node ls. So we will first log into um, so SSH hyphen I. We'll pass our private key and we'll go root at this IP. We'll say yes. And we're able to log in. We will log into. We'll do the same here. SSH I. SSH ID blah blah blah. Root at IP. Yes. So this is going to be uh, worker two, and that's going to be the master uh, the, the master node. Right. So SSH I. Sage, blah, blah, blah. Um, root, oops, root and IP. Yes. All right. So now what we want to do with Tmux is synchronize the panes. Right. And so now, if I type clear, see, it gets applied to all three panes. So uh, we'll do an apt update. Actually, no, forget about that. We'll do host name. Uh, oh, hello. No, we don't need. <laughs> well, actually, we don't need to do this now. Now, do you know what? We'll disable swap. So we'll do swap off hyphen A. There we go. Uh, I think if we do cat proc mem info uh, let's see we grew up hyphen i for swap yep zero but we've got no swap all right so we will quickly disable uh, synchronized pains because we need to do we need to set the host name so host name CTL set host name uh, and this one is going to be uh, Fisher Meister right and then uh, host name CTL set host name and that's going to be Fisher worker one and we'll do host name CTL set host name Fisher worker two. There we go. So if we log out of each, log back in, as you can see, the host name has been updated for each and every one of them. Good. All right. So we've done this, right? Let's see. Uh, CKA Kate's container D. All right, so this is done. This is done. We've set the host name. Now we need to update the Etsy host uh, file. So we will synchronize the panes again. Right? And we'll do Vim Etsy hosts. What? What's going on? Vim Etsy host. Hmm. Huh. Good. Um. And so now we'll need to. Um, invalid token, of course. L the node ls. So that's going to be Meister. All right, IP. 
P is going to be Fisher Meister. And then we have worker one and worker two. That's going to be worker one and worker two. It's going to be this. Knights of Fisher. Work one. Fisher work two. Now I don't know why. Hang on a second. Right. What? Oh, let me just fix that. I don't know why. Did that. It's a bit finicky if you ask me, but you know. Alright, we'll go back here. And then we'll do the same. There we go. Ideally, we want this below localhost. done perfect all right so now we can uh, set window synchronize pins on right go free cat at see hosts we have uh, we've added <clears throat> the IPs along with the host names. Good. Uh, all right. So we've disabled swap, we've added the unique host names, and then we've added the, um, we've um, added the hosts to the host file. Great, so now we need to install container D. Let me check my list. I oh, know before we do that we need to create a we need to create a a user. So can we do this? Yep, we can do I think it's uh, user add hyphen m, let's see. Yeah, user add hyphen m uh, fisher hyphen s bin dash and hyphen g I believe. Create a group with the same name as the user. No, nope. where's the group? Oh, hello. Uh, hyphen G name ID is a primary group of the new account, and then we'll do capital G. I think sudo. Yep. So if we do groups Fisher. Okay, Fisher and sudo, uh, and we'll do password Fisher. Uh, let's do. Fisher one two three. Fisher one two three. There you go. Um, we'll also do vim at c sudoers. And we'll oops. And that's going to be for user Fisher. And I think it's no password. If I'm not mistaken, right? Let's see. Passwordless sudo. Uh, oh no. I got it wrong. Let's 
go back and see Cedars. Oops. Sure. There we go. <coughs> All right. Uh, SU Fisher. Okay, so if we do sudo app update, we shouldn't be, yeah, we're not prompted for a password. Good. All right. So we did this, we did that, we've disabled swap. So we're going to upgrade to the app, up, upgrade, up, upgrade, y, and sudo apt, up, uh, auto remove, hyphen y2. It's doing its thing. Let's go back and see if Brazil. Nope. Still 4 0. I don't think it's, I don't think they're gonna score anymore. They're not gonna They're not gonna risk it. I'm not gonna risk uh, conceding goals now. Uh So Neymar is still on, on the pitch. Vinicius, I think they still have Rodrigo on the bench. Uh, what's his name? Jesus too. So yeah, a lot of uh, attacking firepower for Brazil. Um, I will install container D. So update upgrade. In fact, let me just Uncheck the boxes just so we know where we are. All right, looks like it's done. So we can move on to install container D, and I believe uh, we can essentially just do sudo app install hyphen y. Uh, I think it's run c in container D. Yep. Uh, worker one is not finished processing. Why is it taking so long for worker one to get up to speed? Pick up the pace, man. What are you doing? I don't like that it's just stuck at 98%. This is bad. What is going on with worker one? Wow, look at this. Oops. Hang on, I did install container D, so look, okay, let me just install it again then. sudo apt install hyphen y, 
container D run C. Alright, so we're gonna have to wait for this to, to, to finish. Alright, so it's up to speed now. I believe it creates a container D. No, it does not. Alright, so we're just gonna go back to root real quick. Um, and then we'll create Etsy container D. The reason is because. Um, container runtime. Yeah, see container runtime for information. Install and config prerequisites. Now we have to do this. So we have to set up, do the initial setup. So we'll go. There we go. I think we're loading kernel modules. Uh, to load explicitly, run sudo mod pro, yeah. In order for Linux, for Linux nodes IP table to correctly view bridge traffic, verify the net, blah, 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 set to one in your sysctr config. This looks like very advanced Linux networking. That's going over my head, to be honest. Uh, but we'll trust the documentation. When systemd is chosen as the init system, the init process generates consumes the root control group. Systemd has tight integration with C groups and allocates C group to systemd unit. Um, two C group managers, that blah, 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 blah. Container runtimes. Uh, container D, there we go. All right, this section outlines the necessary steps to use container D as a contain, uh, CRI at runtime. Use the following commands in install container D on your system. Follow the instructions for getting started with container D. Return to the step once you've created a valid configuration file. And so that's why I created the um, container D directory because, what is it? Uh, uh, uh. Container D uses configuration file located in etc container D configure terminal for specifying daemon level options. A simple configuration file can be found here. The default configuration can be generated via this. Right. So now, presumably, we can do that. Permission denied. This is weird. All right, well, I'll go back to, actually we don't need sudo, we can just do that, there we go, great, um, hopefully we can go back to the Fisher user, uh, where are we, uh, container D, follow the instructions, blah, 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 on the Linux default CRI on Linux, the default CRI socket for container D is run container D, container D sock, play blah blue. Configuring the system D C group driver. To use a system D C group driver in Etsy container D config.toml with run C, set this system C group to true. All right, so we'll sudo in Etsy container D config.toml. And then we'll look for system D C group. Hi, so there's only one. And we'll essentially just set that to true. Um, okay. If you installed container D from a package, which we did, you may find that the CRI integration plugin is disabled by default. You need to uh, make sure that CRI is not included in a disabled plugin list within Etsy container D config. So let's go back and let's check the disabled, disabled plugins and it's empty. So we're good. 
If your plot is changed, make sure to restart container D. So we'll do that. There we go. For good measure, let's see. If it's actually running. Okay, it's running. Good. Um, overriding the sandbox image. Uh, who cares? All right, we don't need this. So installing container runtime, we've done this. Installing kubeadm, kubelet, and kubectl. Okay. Let's go back to this. Uh, yeah, kubectl, kubelet. So all th this step is going to be for every single node in the cluster. So we still need uh, pane synchronization. I guess we'll just. Install the prerequisites like this. Hopefully, it's going to be good enough, right? Stupid chair. Give me a minute. All right. Should be good now. Okay. Uh, great. So is it all installed? Yep. Now this didn't work for me, I think, the last time I did it. So let's try it. Yeah, so I found a workaround and that is to use uh, wget. So we'll do this. So first we need to create, the, if I do Etsy apt key rings, If I do ls at c app ls at c apt, so as you can see, we don't have the key rings uh, directory, so we'll do uh, make dir at c apt key rings like that. And then we'll do wget hyphen q zero hyphen. Uh, and then we'll copy this, right? And then we'll send that over to that path like this. All right, that didn't work. Let's see. Ah, it's not zero, it's O, isn't it? No? Hang on. Well, it's Q zero, right? I think Q is for um, yeah. We'll, we'll just use this, and then we'll go Etsy. Uh, hang on, what was the uh, path? Yeah, that was the path. I 
I wonder why it's not working. That's fine, we'll just use this. This is weird. Try again. It's not creating the file when it's supposed to be. Is it O? All right, let's go help. Let's see. It's O, you absolute dongle. I was right. So there we go. If you do the WC L, let's see, apt keyrings, Kubernetes, blah. Good. All right, so we have something great. Now we can do this. And the reason is because I think there's uh, something about sign by, yeah. See, Etsy, blah, blah, blah. So it's looking for the signature on here. Boom. And now we can do update. Oops. Because that's the Google Cloud public key. It's going to be used to sign. Ooh, uh. All right, so we're downloading Cube uh, ADM, kubectl, and Kubelet, and then we will hold them. <clears throat> All right, it's done. And as always, um, worker one is behind, and we're just going to hold Kubelet, kubectl, and kubectl. So that way, if we update a package or downgrade a package, uh, these three will not change. Um, and it will not be upgraded or updated by mistake. <clears throat> okay, configuring a C group driver, so that's good. Uh, now we are going to create a cluster. Um, so, as you, so we've done all this. So if you have already installed kubeadm, uh, should we do this? Oh, what the hell, why not? For good measure. Uh, <clears throat> Let's add some music. Do we have lo-fi, copyright free? Uh, I absolutely hate lo-fi. Coding comfy. Say hi if you're not a bot. All right, so let's just quickly update the to-do list. All right, so we've installed uh, and configured container D. We've installed and held uh, QBDM, blah, blah, blah. And it's not zero, it's O. Uh, so now we'll set up the control plane node, um, which is gonna be very easy, in fact. Um, so recommended, 
If you have plans to upgrade the single control plane QBDM cluster to high availability, you should specify the control plane endpoint. Da -da -da. We have no intention of doing this, so we're going to skip this one. Choose a pot network add-on and verify whether it requires any arguments to be passed to QBDM in it. Depending on which third party you choose, you might want to set the pod network slider to provide a specific value. See installing a network pod network add-on. Uh, blah blah blah. This section contains important information about networking setup and deployment order. Read all of this advice carefully. Take care that your pod network must not overlap with any of the host networks. You are likely to see problems if there is any overlap. If you find a collision between your network plugins, preferred net network, and some of your host networks, you should think of a suitable slider block to use instead. Then use that during QBDM in it. By default, QBDM sets up your cluster to use and enforce use of RBAC. Make sure that your pod network plugins support support RBAC, and do so, and so do any manifests that you use to deploy it. All right, see a list of add-ons that implement the Kubernetes networking model. Okay, see this page for a non-exhaustive list of networking add-ons supported by Kubernetes. And so we've got Calico, Canal, Cilium, CNI Genie, Contrail, Flannel. Flannel apparently is the most popular and there's WeaveNet too. But we'll use flannel. Uh, if you use custom pot cider, not 10.244.0016, you first need to download the above manifest and modify the network to match your one. All right, so we're not going to, but apparently, according to this, <coughs> the default um, pot network that it's, um, in fact, let's see. Let's open this file. Is there a yep ten two four four zero zero sixteen? So this is the one that it expects the uh, network cider that it expects. So we'll but before we do this, we are going to go back here and do QBDM init. So we'll do QBDM init. Uh, actually, now this needs to be done. Oops, so we need to disable synchronized panes. There we go. And we'll do QBDM pseudo QBDM init. Uh, I think it's pod. What is it? Shouldn't it be something pod something? Pod network cider. There we go. So, boom. And it's 10.244.0.0 slash 16, which means the first 16 bits are going to be fixed and the rest are going to be variable. So this, this gives us 2 to the power of 16 possible addresses, uh, which is a lot. <laughs> um, so sudo qd a minute, blah, blah. blah. I think that's it. Let's see. You can also perform this action in beforehand using QBDM config images pull. Okay, so it's going to pull images. Well, while it's pulling images, let's go back to ooh four one. I knew it. So Rodrigo has been subbed on. Uh, Weaverton, Weaverton. For Allison, hang on, what? Did he? What happened to Allison? Oh boy, this is not a good look. See all match events. Oh, Martinelli was subbed on. Okay. And Rodrigo. 
Oh, maybe they can bag another one. I don't know. Oh, but we're into added time now. So, yeah, I think it's over for Korea. <clears throat> and so I think it's going to be... I think it's going to be... Uh, oh, but we don't have the uh, fixtures. Let's see the fixtures. Yeah, so it's Netherlands, Argentina, England, France, and Croatia, Brazil. And then the last one is either going to be ice. It's either going to be Spain, Portugal, or Morocco, Portugal. I think Morocco can win it tomorrow. All right, well, good. So. Uh, to start using your cluster, you need to run a following as a regular user. So we'll do that. We'll do this, and we'll do sudo cp hyphen i blah. So we'll copy the uh, main cube config. We'll add the correct permissions. Boom. And then presumably, if I do alias, uh, let's do vim bash rc. Alias. If I do alias uh, k equals cube ctl. In fact, let me see if I can sudo apt install cube color. Nope, there's no such thing as cube color. Cube color. How do I install this? Uh, oh boy. Go install. If you're not using Go. Do we have brew on, on this? Huh. Okay, we don't have brew. Um, do we have go? Apt install. Oh, we're not going to bother. Whatever. We'll just do k get node. Uh, source bash rc. All right, it's not ready because we need to install the uh, flannel plugin. That's the one. There we go. Uh, another thing we need to do is we need to I think uh, I think it's kubeadm token. Kubeadm, yeah, kubeadm token. Uh, list create what's the print join command no, that's the one and cube uh, qdm total create there we go and so that's the command that we want to run on each and every one of these uh, on each and every one of the worker nodes so we'll do that. First, let's see if our node is ready. Okay, so the control plane is ready. So we, what? Copy, paste, what? Oh, sudo kubeadm. And we'll do the same thing for uh, worker node two. Once it's done, okay, great. Wow. 
Why is it stuck at full wide? Oh, full time. Yep. That's it. Well, well, well. Japan and Korea have been knocked out. So it's really going to be a Europe versus South America uh, battle, it seems. Yeah, France, England, Croatia, Netherlands. Uh, oh, we could have an Argentina versus Brazil <clears throat> in the semi finals. That's going to be epic. All right, so keep CTL, get nodes, and they're all ready. Um, all right, so now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bash. I'm gonna do scp i I'm gonna copy the uh, the cube config from. I'm gonna copy the cube config from um, from the master node locally, and we're gonna test to see if it works. So. Blah, blah, blah. and we'll do root at what's the AP uh, it oh god sudo apt install and why not tools all right IPA, not IP hyphen A. And I think it's F0. There we go. Uh, right. I hope that's the uh, correct address. So we'll go home fisher uh, dot cube, not cube slash config. And we want this in temp cube config. All right. So okay, good. Uh, I believe we can do export export cube config equals temp cube config. Um, and so. If we do kubectl, get node, right, we've got fishermeister, fisherworker1, fisherworker2. Great, so we'll create a deployment. So we'll do k, uh, we have k. Oh, hello, we have cube color locally. Brilliant stuff. Okay, so k, create, deploy, nginx, hyphen hyphen image equals nginx alpine. Uh, we'll, we don't need replicas, uh, and that's it. Yeah. So okay, get deploy. All right, so it's ready. Now we're just gonna expose. We'll do k expose deploy. Nginx. Uh, k expose deploy nginx. Uh, name is going to be Nginx SVC. Um, Nginx SVC, I think the port is going to be 80, and the type is going to be node port. All right, so if we do get SVC, okay, so we've got the node port. I just want to know. K get PO have an O wide. It's uh, it's been assigned to Fisher Worker 2. So if we do K get no hyphen O wide, the IP for worker 2 is this. And so presumably if we do if we curl this at port 3911, we have the Nginx page. Uh, just for good measure, let's go to the browser. Let's go to 
the browser and see if it works and it does although the CSS seems a bit uh, <laughs> funny looking but it's definitely working so that's good it's a good sign um, so yeah let's see do we have a let's see k get po let's see if we can pull the log yep all right so we've got all the access logs so that's great all right so uh Okay, so we've set up the control plane node, we've installed flannel, we've joined the other nodes, and we ran a deployment to check that it works. So that's great. Uh, but as you can see, this was very tedious. We had a lot of copy and pasting to do, and sometimes um, sometimes it didn't work the way we the way we hoped, uh, or as quickly as we as we hoped. So tomorrow this was a very very short stream uh, but tomorrow uh, we will be uh, using a uh, Ansible to provision those VMs and then so we'll create a, an Ansible script to provision the VMs um, and then after that we'll use Terraform to bootstrap the, the infrastructure and we'll use it probably in conjunction with um, in conjunction with um, Ansible so that we can automate everything and then we would essentially just do Terraform apply uh, and <clears throat> and we would uh, would get a, um, a fully working uh, I don't want to say production ready because uh, I mean there are a lot of things we didn't do and that we could have done but uh, you know, it's um, it's good to have, and it's good to know how to use QADM too. Because if we want to run upgrades and stuff like that, it's going to be very, very, uh, very useful to uh, to know how to do this. So, uh, so yeah, let's see if there's anybody looking at Oop, what happened here. Uh, yeah, so the people left, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, hopefully tomorrow um, I'll be able to stream for a lot longer. Although with the World Cup, it's going to be a little bit, uh, it's going to be a little bit distracting. Um, but I'm going to try my best because right now it's road to CKA. So hopefully I will pass. Um, so I'll leave you with this. And um, I'll see you uh, hopefully in the next one. Cheers.